to those here. Security issues in and around the country, as well as the efforts of security agencies in the fight against criminalities and the defense of the territorial integrity of the nation, usually is our focus on security dossier. Welcome to Secu Security Dossier on your channel of choice, Television Nigerian. I am Lawrence Aldo. Operational coordination among security agencies and interagency cooperation is basically our focus. With me in the studio to discuss this is Mr. Clements of Buleku. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Also is Mr. Terence Kwanum. You're welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. The two gentlemen are um, security experts and uh, analysts as well. So we, uh, together we shall be doing justice to the, pro uh, to the topic of the day. Last week, the nation was thrown into a sad mood following an incident between operatives of the Nigerian police and some elements in the Nigerian army, which led to the death of three officers and a civilian in Ibi, Taraba State. This, and among the many issues compounding the already dangerous security situation in the country, are going to be tabled before and after the break. Stay with us. Stay tuned, and if you're just joining us, it is Security Dozier on Television Nigerian. You can reach us on www.tvn.news, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Television Nigerian. Still talking on the issue of operational coordination and synergy among security agencies. In Nigeria, I have with me in the studio, like I mentioned earlier, uh, two security experts, Clement Ogoleku. You're welcome again. Thank you for having and me. And another security analyst, uh, Mr. Terence Kwanu. Thank you, Lord. Um, let's take it from here. What is your general appraisal of uh, the security situation in the country, especially in the last four years? I'll start with you, Clement. Well, uh, I'm talking about security in the country, Nigeria. There will never be a perfection as far as security is concerned. But uh, within the last four years, we have seen a lot of improvement in the security system, in as much as the government is trying his much, as much as it can to ensure to combat the crime. But the criminal in the other parts were also thinking to see how they can also counter the effort of the government. But generally speaking, I think the government have done very, very well, and uh, the security situation is a continuous process. We are improving day by day, and we should also be one step ahead of every situation, so that we should be able to be a step ahead of every kind of crime, so that we we'll po be proactive. Proactiveness is the word that the government needs to work upon. They need to be proactive and to ensure that before they act, not reactive major. Is that Terence? Yeah, the, the security situation has been an up and down situation in the last four years. Uh, there's serious achievements on the other side, and then there's a down on another side, and an up on the other side. So plus or minus is an, uh, an up and down situation. But I think there's great improvement because um, uh, there's a direction at the moment that only needs a political way to cover it. You know that the situation is uh, coming out on the negligence of uh, leadership of the country in the area of education, employment, and next wise that. So, if you catch a criminal today, and then 
uh, you remind him and he's back on the street and he's not employed, it's obviously he's not going to have anything to do with or go back to that crime. So, uh, by and large, our security forces have been able to show us that if this crime would have been minimal, uh, they would have been able to curtail it. But then the indices uh, that, are, that are driving out this crime are going on on the higher side. So it's always going to be an up and down situation. Unless we handle the issue of education and unemployment, uh, this crime situation is going to increase. Okay, now staying with our topic for today, yes. uh, we intend to just look at lack of coordination, operational coordination, I mean, and synergy among security agencies. Just last week, the nation was thrown into a very sad mood with uh, the, 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 the killing of uh, three IRT police operatives, including a civilian, by some elements of, uh, in the Nigerian army. By and large, what would be your reaction? Uh, Mr. Terrence, I would like you to react to yeah, this. Yeah, I saw that as a tough sabotage, not an issue of synergy. Uh, because we have seen so many areas where the, the security agencies have been able to synergize that uh, cover up, up crime in the country. Yeah, there's been this interagency rivalry uh, for uh, No, no, but not on the security situations in the country at the moment. There has, there has been some synergy. What happened in Ibi was a sabotage. And uh, you know when the when the police officers arrested the kidnapper and left, you know they were being pursued by the community people. They were the they were the ones that alerted the military at the checkpoint, and then uh, there was no they didn't even allow the police people to identify them. So if you look at the video, after the shooting, the police officer that was still alive was shouting, "I'm a police officer, I'm a police officer," but nobody could hear him out to say let identify. And they said, and then the person that was handcuffed with uh, on the legs and on, uh, and in the hand was able to escape. He stayed at large. So I saw that as sabotage. It wasn't an issue of, on the part of who. Yeah. It was a sabotage of the of the military people that were at the checkpoint. Is that is that supposed to be like a a I mean declaring the Nigerian military Nigerian no, army? No, 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 not military. Nigerian military. You know, there, there have been this serious issue of allowing personnel to be in one place for some time. They, they get involved in a lot of things that are unprofessional. Uh, and uh, there's, there's this propagation that these people should not be staying. There was a, they, they rather synergize with the community people. Uh, this kidnapper seemed to be so powerful that when he was arrested, somebody that has been kidnapping and committing serious crime in, the, in an area was arrested and the community was resisting. Uh, and if, if we look at the video problem, you see that the, the civilians were uh, uh, manhandling the, the police officers and the military uh, didn't do anything. So I think even if they had met a police officer, another police officer, the police officer would have still killed them. Because there is a, there is a connect between the civilians and the security personnel and these kidnappers in that area. And we have always been uh, saying this, that this kidnapping syndicate has to do with also uh, uh, officers. Now, um, uh, President Muhammad Buhari said something in the last televised um, broadcast to Nigerian interview, so to say. He said, you cannot keep harboring criminals in your community while you keep blaming government. Because to him, he believes that every criminal comes from a particular community. How do you react to that? Do you think the people in, in, in that community largely knew this man is a, is a criminal and they collaborated you know, with the, with the elements of the Nigerian army in that location to sabotage the kidnapping? Yes, that is very, very correct as far as I'm concerned because the truth there is that the criminal is there and they are aware of it. But the soldier, the military personnel, since they have been there for a very long time, they have now become like pass and parcel of the community. They have become like a family, and they are trying to play a protective measure to protect the person. And these are some of the kind of things we need to go against. Because in as much as we are trying to combat the criminal criminality from the community, the security agents on their own part need to help the government, not by helping the individual. Now that the individual have gone at large now, how who knows the next step of what he's going to do? 
the damage is going to cause next. These are the kind of issues that the government need to address. The kind of deployment that they do to a certain area, at least within a space of time, you need to change to ensure that information are well protected. And what kind of information they give to the government, how did the government make use of the information is very, very important. Again, um, over and over and over again, we get to see um, issues where there are some form of rivalry among security agencies. We cannot deny this fact. Yes, the defense headquarters recently has, you know, come up with several programs that you know tend to bring these people together: the paramilitary, the army, the police, and other agencies. You know, it could be sports, it could be cultural, it could be anything. But we still have this, um, you know, uh, rivalry. Recently, a, a civil defense officer was killed, beaten to death in front of his family by some elements in the police. I, I want to use this el word element because they are renegade, it do because they do not represent the entirety of the force or the service in question. So what is the problem of entire agency synergy? Why are we getting it wrong, Mr. Terence? Yeah, it, it is, it's training and the system. The security architecture of Nigeria is faulty. You know that the, the security architecture we are using at the moment, has the uh, the defense people, the army, the air force, the navy, and the police. Yes. And uh, the creation of the civil defense and uh, and the rest. And the invocation of the immigration prisons. Uh, and no, the they even they, they 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 even were in the interior. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me know. so the the invocation of other security personnel the, do do not reflect in the in the architecture. Uh, so when they were created, uh, their primary role was protect uh, national facilities uh, like the pipelines and X, Y, Z. So then because of security situations at the moment in this country, everybody that is armed needs to be in the battlefront. And I think I think the training it affects the training and the synergy that are supposed to be working together. I think that is all. And uh, I think the issue of uh, motivation, uh, our security personnel they are. They are poorly paid. You know, uh, before now, uh, they used to be at par with uh, other security personnel all over the world uh, when uh, they started. And, and so the training could, was always better. It, it was in the country and outside the country. Uh, you know, this thing started with a claim in this one where a dollar was one naira, and the one naira was almost to a pound. So you could go anywhere and receive good training. But at the moment where there is a lot of dichotomy, uh, in these finances, I think we are not meeting up uh, with the current uh, training these people are supposed to receive. So I think the com the comradeship, the comradeship is not there. Now, now you've just mentioned comradeship. That that brings me to something else. Yeah. Following the issue in Taraba State, the the police released certain statements and then you know let out four key statements, four key questions. Where is the kidnapper? You know, where is the uh, esprit de corps and so on and so forth? About yeah. four questions we're asking. But the army is saying, look, this issue is already under investigation. Why inciting the public? In fact, they have even gone to a point of even telling their personnel to stay away from where the police is dominant. And if you have to travel, travel in Mufti and cover yourself up properly. Don't you think this is pretending another? dangerous dimension in the security architecture. Uh, yeah, I think it's the police headquarters that didn't handle the situation well. Yes, the situation has, had, uh, has happened. Uh, investigation is ongoing, both at the police headquarters mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the defense headquarters. So I think I did, they didn't need those kind of statements at the moment to the way for the outcome of the of investigation. But I think the community that actually uh, this thing took place would, uh, should be handled properly. Mm -hmm. uh, the traditional rulers and the, the and the, the leadership of that community uh, should be apprehended and uh, investigated because the act they put up, they even they reinstigated the army. The level they were pursuing, these people were in the bus. They of course, the army at the time, one could say they had no choice but uh, to they, act in no, cause they, they actually instigated the army because the way they were pursuing, I know this was a private bus with the private registration number, but where I fought the army was, they would have
try to identify or simply force the kidnapper and hand them it over to the community and allow the prisoners to identify themselves and go down killing them. That's why I thought them, but the community is responsible for what happened. So what do you think? Well, what I think now is that uh, first thing first, since we are dealing with the issue of uh, the police and the military, the kidnapper should be first declared wanted. Because through the kidnapper, a lot of information will get to the national security that will know how to how to solve the problem of kidnapping within that environment. But allowing the person to go at large. And this investigation we are talking about, how long will this investigation play? That is the problem we are having. Like the one that happened between the police and the civil defense, up to now the investigation is still going. Those who perpetrate such crimes should be punished and be brought to book. Because as long as this is not taken care of, Properly, another person will still commit the same crime and will start to use it as a reference point. When this person did it, what happened to him? So the best thing the government needs to do, as it happened, you address the issue holistically and come to a concrete solution so that every other person will feel relieved. And with that, the two security agencies will be at peace because if the person that caused this crime that led to the death of police officer is at large and the innocent police officer who are in the point of doing their work have been killed and nothing is done, then then other police officers, in course of discharging their duty, they will not have that confidence to do that, which is very, very okay. important. Now, we, 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 we can, you know, we, we, we may not be able to exhaust this topic, but of course, we cannot talk about um, national security without looking at the role of private security agencies. Uh, Mr. Obeliko, I would like to put this to you. What is the role of private security agencies in the uh, in, 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 in improving national security? The role of private security agency in improving national security is to assist the effort of the private of the national securities who to some extent cannot go to individual houses, cannot go to some of the local environment where the private security men exist. So by the private security men, one of the key roles they play to the government or to the national security is providing of information, which is very, very important because in discharging your duty, you have your limitation. But as long as you have been registered, licensed, you are working with the government, you operate as the rules that governs the organization. Now you have the regulating body that covers you, that is the NSCDC. So by so doing, the way you employ your guards, the way you vet your guard is well taken care of. And when you employ the guard into the system, then fine, deploying the guards to locations. At every month, it is your duty to write a comprehensive report to the NSCDC, telling them what is happening in this environment because there are some environments or there are some places that the National, National Security Agency cannot cover. But with the help of the private security agency and providing timely information to the national security, they will now give them information on how crime is being combated or how crime happen in the environment. So that will now help them to ensure that to comb those environments or deploy their men to the environment to ensure that such a crime will not conduct it again. And also, some individuals are dubious in their, car, in their way of doing things, in their way they live. You see some people that they are not working, but they are dealing with a whole lot of money. They don't go out for money till night. They only go out at night and come back early in the morning. Such information helps the nation because by providing such information, you are helping the government to know because in this country now, you need to know your neighbor. Anywhere you live, you know your neighbor. Giving the government or the national security information about your environment, you are helping them to combat crime. Okay, you hold it there. Uh, Mr. Terence, yeah. do you think there is a role private security? Because most people have looked at them like, okay, purely business enterprise. They collect money to provide guard services to homes and offices. Do you think they can their role can be expanded to, you know, improvement or providing community policing or what have you? Yeah, I think uh, uh, from the registration, they should be made to provide the role in turn. You know, when the this, the situation we are now, we need uh, we need a lot of intern to be able to handle the security situation. And then they go to this neighborhood uh, that are not easily accessible by the national security agencies. And if they bring out true intel, uh, it can assist. And then they should be able to receive training that will help in, the, uh, in recruiting community policy. 
uh, because the, the, the community policing issue too is becoming uh, a yardstick for criminals to even go through. Because when they are recruiting uh, community policing in, in a place, they look at the notorious persons to come and be part of the membership. Now, when they form part of the membership, they, instead of giving the intel to national security, they give it to criminals because uh, what they, all they are doing is to do that work and get some, some, uh, some, uh, some money from the community. So the people that always give money to get information uh, easily like that is the criminal. So if the private securities are in the environment they are recruiting uh, people for community policing, those are the role they are supposed to play. Monitor and know that the people that are part of this community policing are of good character and then the intake gets to the right uh, authorities. Well, gentlemen, I must thank you for coming on the show today. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to have Mr. Clement of Lepo, mm -hmm. Operational Manager of Te Tesco Security Services and uh, uh, Public Affairs Analyst, uh, Mr. Terence Coyne. My pleasure. You're welcome. My pleasure. Well, you've heard from uh, our guests on the studio today, and we've been talking about operational coordination among security agencies and uh, how we can inculcate uh, private security guards into national security as well as uh, uh, you know uh, making them responsible for providing of intel you know to the national security services this is where we will draw the curtain on the program today you can send us your reaction via SMS on the numbers displayed on your screen while you keep up with us on Facebook and YouTube um, the program today has been very exciting. Until we come your way again next time uh, with another exciting edition, I am Lawrence Aldu. Bye for now.